Diyos. Maraming salamat po sa buhay at lakas na aming tagnay. Sa liwanag ng kaisipan at sa pagkakataon, maipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga kabataan. Gabayan po ang bawat isa sa amin. Ano man ang bahagi na aming gagampanan, naway maging maayos at matagumpay ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral na aming gagawin sa araw na ito. Patawarin po kami sa aming mga pagkulang at pagkakasala. At sa aming paggawa, ikaw po ang aming makasama. Amen. Hello there, Grade 9 Learners! Welcome to another great learning engagement. This is Palenzuela Live, Ave 9. I am Donna, and I will be your health teacher for today. Join me as I teach the techniques on how to help someone in situations that may bring danger to their lives. But before we begin, here are some reminders you need to observe while engaging in our discussion for today. Learners, are you now ready to learn? Can I get smiling with a heart shaped emoji to see how excited you are? Okay, thank you, my dear grade 9 student. For today's learning engagement, we will be focusing on the following most essential learning competencies. First, Demonstrate proper techniques in carrying and transporting the victim of unintentional injury. And demonstrate proper first aid procedures for common unintentional injuries. Now, let me check how much familiar you are about the different kinds of transport for an injured person. Let us have your first activity entitled Picture and Figure Out. Using the pictures as clues, arrange the jumbled letters to figure out the type of transport for an injured person. You may type your answer in the comment section or write it in your notebook. You will be given 5 seconds to answer. Are you ready? Here's number one. If you answered chair carry, you got it right. Here's number two. If you answered under a drag, you are correct. Let's now have number three. If 
If you answer blanket rag, yes, you're doing great. Here's number four. If you answered Herman's drug, bravo, you're right. And, and here's number five. If you answered Hamokeri, you're fantastic. Did you get a perfect score? If yes, here are two thumbs up or a job well done. But if you did not, here's a heart emoji for trying your best to get the correct answers. Transporting an injured person to a safer place requires great care. This is to avoid the gravity of the injury and to avoid death. A first aider must undergo proper training. When doing this, a first aider must consider the following factors. Number one, weight and height of the victim. Two, status of the victim, whether conscious or unconscious. Three, environment. Is it safe? Is it smooth? Is it wide? Or is it narrow? And finally, special need considerations such as the injuries of the victim. Let us now find out the different techniques in carrying and transporting a victim of unintentional injury to a safer place. Also, let us learn which appropriate technique you must need depending on the victim's status. And we are lucky today, for we will be joining by the volunteers from Valenzuela Disaster Risk Reduction Management Office to demonstrate each transporting techniques properly. Good day, learners. I am Christopher Arcilia from Valenzuela City Disaster Risk and Reduction Management Office, Training Division. And together with my buddies, we will demonstrate the techniques in carrying and transporting victims and the proper first aid procedures for common unintentional injuries. Techniques in carrying and transporting a victim of unintentional injuries. Let us now have the first technique, piggyback technique. This method is used if the victim who cannot walk but conscious. This technique is also advisable if the rescuer is heavier than the injured victim or if the rescuer is strong enough since you will need to carry the full weight of the patient. Backstrap Carry This technique is used with conscious or unconscious victim and when the patient is smaller than the rescuer. Using it with an unconscious victim requires a second responder to help position the injured or ill patient on the back of the rescue. Do not use this technique if you suspect the victim has a head, neck, or spinal injury. Fireman scary. Use if the victim is a male or this the easiest way to transport a light and smaller victim. 
This is also the most recommended way to carry an unconscious patient since the risk for fall or breakage is very minimal. On the other hand, this is the firewoman scary, which is used if the victim is a female. Similar to a piggyback technique, the fireman's or firewoman scary also requires the rescuer to carry the full weight of the victims, which is why he must be strong or big enough for this method. Underarm drag. This technique is used when the floor is smooth and there's a short distance transport of the victim. Fireman's drag or tied hands crawl. This technique is used when the rescuer and the victim must crawl underneath a low structure. This method is used with conscious victim. Commonly applied in far fighting or collapse building situation which involves dragging the victim by the shoulder or upper clothing in a face upward position across the floor or ground. Blanket drag. This technique is applied when the victim is seriously injured and should not be lifted. There is our seat carry. The technique is done by two rescuers using a chair. This method is used when the victim has little or no arm strength. It is also better if the victim weighs less than the rescuers. Hammock carry or the three man carry. This technique is done by three rescuers. It can be used when the victim is unconscious or cannot move but needed to be transported. Alongside carry. The technique is also done by three rescuers in which they transport the victim standing in the uninjured side. Six-man lift and carry. This technique is done in the presence of six rescuers and involves rolling the injured victim to the side lying position to allow for a spine board to be wedged in place beneath the patient in order to transport and 
those are the different techniques to transport an injured victim demonstrated by our volunteers from BCDRRMO. Let me now check how much you have learned from the first half of discussion. Identify the word being described in each statement. Choose the letter of the correct answer. You may type your answer in the comment box or write it in your notebook. You have 5 seconds per question to answer and your timer starts now. It is the easiest way to transport a light and small victim. So, it is used if there are six first aiders. It is applicable when the rescuer and the victim must crawl underneath a low surface. Number four, it is used when carriers stay on an injured side of the victim. And number five, it is used when the victim has a little or no arm strength. Now, let us check your answers, learners. Number one, letter E. Two, C. Number three, P. Four, letter D. And five, letter A. All right, you're doing awesome, learners. Now, let us have a short recall of what you have learned from the previous lesson about first aid. From the following statements, choose the roles of first aid. Write the letter of your answer in the comment box. You have 10 seconds to answer and your timer starts now. A. It is a bridge that fills the gap between the victim and the physicians. B. It is not intended to compete with or to take the place of the services of the physician. C. E, it is a way to practice camaraderie and unity. D. E, it is a practice to become a professional doctor. D. E, it ends when the service of the physician begins. Okay, time's up. Let us see if you got the correct answers. Here are the roles of first aid. It is a bridge that fills the gap between the victim and the physician. It is not intended to compete with or to take place of the services of the physician. And it ends when the service of the physician begins. Good job, learners! Thank you for your active participation. In your previous discussion, you have also learned the following objectives of first aid. To save lives, to prolong life, to alleviate suffering, and to prevent further injury. Today, let us find out the most common and intentional injuries and their first aid as our volunteers 
from the Disaster Risk Reduction Management Office demonstrate them. Plus, some first aid tips for accidental injuries. Fracture is a break or crack in a bone. An open fracture pierces the skin surface, while in a closed fracture, the skin above is intact. First aid technique, check the vital sign, do not move the injured part, but if the victim can move it, you may ask him to hold it. Stop bleeding if there is any. You must move the person, immobilize the broken part by sprinting. You may use an improvised splint out of ordinary wood, just make a pad board or thumb splint. Pitch a formable splint, which is easier to use since it's flexible. But some splint is not allowed to be used for bended fractured arms. And lastly, seek medical help immediately. Dislocation. A partial or complete displacement of the bones. First aid technique. First, call for help immediately. Clean the affected part. You may use an improvised clean from an ordinary wound. If the victim can hold the injured part, you may ask him to do so in order to tie clean. But if there's another person present, Ask help to put the split. Do not try to move a dislocated part or shift back into place. Apply ice on the injured part to reduce swelling. It's an injury to the ligaments of the bone due to accidental tearing or overstretching. Strain. It is an injury to the muscles which is a result of improper use of the muscles. This is commonly happens to bodybuilders who overuse their muscles. First aid technique. For muscle cramps on the foot, you may use a triangular bandage as first aid, but for sprain, you must apply rises. Rest the injured part so it will be relaxed. Apply ice to stop bleeding inside and to prevent swelling. Compress the injured part using bandage if needed. You may also use a splint. Last, elevate the injured part. Heat exhaustion. It is caused by a loss of salt and water due to excessively high temperature. This may lead to heat stroke and even death. First aid technique, transport a victim to a cool place. Give him or her plenty of water. Check the vital signs and seek medical help. Food poisoning. It is caused by consuming food or drink that is contaminated with bacteria or viruses. 
first aid technique. Help the person to lie down and rest. Give him plenty of flavorless fluids to drink and a basin to use if he vomits. Call for medical help if the condition worsens. Soaking. It is the result from a foreign object blocking the throat. It may be partial, meaning the victim can still talk even choking. Or it may be complete obstruction in which the victim cannot speak due to choking. First aid technique. When a person cannot speak or stop coughing, give five back slaps. Stand behind him and help him lean forward. Support his chest with one hand. Give five sharp blows between the shoulders, legs with the heel of your hand. If back blow fall, try abdominal thrust. Stand behind the person and Put your arm around the upper part of his abdomen. Clench your fist with thumbs inward. Place it between navel and the bottom of breastbone. Grasp your fingers, fist with other hand. Pull sharply inward and upwards up to five times. Repeat until the obstruction is clear. Check his mouth. Two fingers Sweep to remove the foreign object caused by choke. If the obstruction still has not cleared, call an ambulance. Continue until help arrives. For infant choking, check infant's responsiveness. You may put the baby on a surface to easily check responses by tapping the feet. If the baby cries, it means that the victim is conscious. If in case the baby does not respond, check its cab for the circulation, airway, and breathing. For the circulation, you may check the pulse. And for the airway and breathing, listen if there is breathing in the count of 10. Two fingers sweep to remove object, blocking the throat. If the food or the object still not removed, hold the baby and perform three chest thrusts. Then, give the baby five back snaps. Repeat chest thrust and back slaps until the foreign object or food comes out. Get it from the mouth by finger sweep. Once the food or object is removed, put the baby into recovery position. Drowning happens when air cannot get into the lungs because of water. It can cause immediate death when taken for granted. First aid technique, lay the person down on his or her back. Check responsiveness by tapping the shoulder three times. If the victim does not respond, check its cab. Circulation. Airway and breathing. To check airway and breathing, 
perform jaw thrust maneuver. Listen to the victim's breathing and observe chest and stomach movement with a count of 10. If there's no pulse or breathing, you may perform CPR or the cardiopulmonary resuscitation. CPR is done by 30 compressions and 3 ventilation, repeated 5 times. If available, you may use an automated external defibrillator or AED that produces electric shock through the chest to normalize the heartbeat. This will help CPR becomes easier. You may also use a ventilation mask in giving air. It's a one-way bulb mask used for CPR. To give air at the same time, it helps to avoid virus transmission from the rescuer to the victim and vice versa. Once CPR is already done, Check again the victim's CAD to confirm if breathing and pulse is present again. If the victim's breathing and pulse returns, put the victim in the recovery position. Heart attack. It is caused by sudden obstruction of blood supply to the part of heart muscle. First aid technique. Help a person sit or lie down with head elevated. Call a medical help. If the person is conscious, give him a full dose of aspirin and advise him to chew it slowly. If the victim is unconscious, Perform CPR. Chemical burn may occur when electricity passes through the body. For safe technique, make sure that the contact with the electrical source is broken. Flood the sites of injury at the entry and exit points of the current with plenty of cold water. If chemical burn is in hands, put paper wax or foil between fingers to avoid sticking together. And if the burn is intense, track the victim to be in working hand so he or she can still hold object just in case. His or her hand can no longer be moved due to burn. Wear disposable gloves and place a sterile dressing or bandage over the burn to protect it from airborne infection. Call for medical help, reassure the victim, and treat for shock. Burn are often used. Due to domestic incidents such as touching a hot iron, friction, or spinning boiling water onto the ski. First aid technique. Here are burn case in the hand and chest stand. The appropriate bandage technique to use as first aid. For severe burn, help the victim to lie down and prevent burnt area from coming into contact with the ground and immediately call for medical assistance. Heat stroke 
It is caused by the failure of the thermostat in the brain to regulate body temperature. When this happens, the blood becomes seriously heated. First aid technique, move the person immediately to a cool. Remove as much of his outer clothing as possible. Call for medical help. Wrap the person in a cold, wet sheet and keep it wet until his temperature drops to 38 degrees. Celsius or 37.5 degrees Celsius under the tongue or armpit respectively. If the person has returned to normal temperature, replace wet sheet with a dry one. Monitor vital signs until helps arrive. If the temperature rises, repeat the cooling process. And here are the five types of first aid tips for accidental injuries. For bleeding, cover the wound, apply direct pressure until the bleeding stops. Apply a bandage over the dressing and continue to apply pressure. Do not attempt to remove anything that is lodged deeply within the wound such as metal or glass. Wait for help to arrive. Now for burns, use caution when treating burns, particularly if you do not know the source of the burn. Remove the source of the burn and use water to cool the burn site. Cover the site loosely with sterile dressing and wait for help arrive. For poisoning, if the person is conscious, determine how they were poisoned and con contact the National Poison Control Center or PCC hotline 28524 for advice. If the person is unconscious or suspected suffering uh, for food poisoning, call 911 or go immediately to the nearest hospital emergency room. For choking, hold the person by the waist and administer five blows from behind with the palm of your hand between their shoulder blades. Using your fist, the thumb side just above the abdomen, give five quick thrusts. Continue until the object is dislodged or until help arrives. For lost consciousness, check for responsiveness by tapping the shoulder of the victim. Do not shake them. If they're face down, turn them face up. Being careful to keep the head, neck, and back in a straight line. Tilt the head. Back and lift and chin to open the airway. Check for bleeding and other injuries and administer CPR as necessary. And those are the five types of first aid tips for accidental injuries. Did you learn a lot, learners? Can you click the heart emoji? If it is yes. Wow. Thank you so much, Grade 9 learners. And special thanks to our cream, Sir Christopher and Ms. Ella Lianto and Mr. Erwin Manyala from BCD RRMO for the demonstration. And at this point, let us have your final task. Identify the unintentional injury being described in each statement. There is a partial or complete displacement of the bones. It is caused by failure 
or the thermostat in the brain to regulate body temperature. When this happens, the blood becomes seriously heated. It is often due to domestic incidents such as touching a hot iron, friction, or spilling boiling water into the skin. It may occur when electricity passes the body. Happens when air cannot get into the lungs because of water. It can cause immediate death when taken for granted. Here are the correct answers. 1. F. Number 2. D. 3, C, 4, letter D, and 5, letter A. Great job, learners! And two thumbs up for your active participation. I hope you learned a lot today and remember, safety does not happen by accident. So always take care of yourself. This has been Ma'am Donna, and see you once again in our next engagement here at Valenzuela Live, Mape 9.